Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Magic Mike's, proudly sponsored by our Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com. You can find cool stuff in stock every day, and check out our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. And finally, check out our new Alter Sleeves. Get your custom sleeve image to the Magic Mike's crew at AlterSleeves.com slash Magic Mike's. I'm Evan Irwin, and we get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Aaron Campbell. How's it going? Ruben Bressler. Hi, Evan hit a high note when he said altar sleeves. Did you notice that he kind of went altar sleeves like like he was doing a Coors Light commercial and twins? And twins. Good. And we kick it off with our first pick in the giveaway. Get your chance at a fifty dollars gift certificate to CoolStuffInc.com by typing exclamation mark raffle in the chat. But subscribe first to get two chances to win. And don't forget our raid at the end of the show to support a member of the community and your suggestions at the uh, end of the show to see who we raid tonight. And, and also, you can enter them during the show. Just uh, at me in the chat. Just at. It's fine. It's no big deal. But the first pick, of course, being Strixhaven. Now that we are on Thursday nights, ladies and gentlemen, we can talk about the super awesome, sweet stuff that literally just happened. Yeah. So that's good, good, always fun. Good timing on our part to switch to Thursdays. It only took us about it. a year and yeah. a half-ish when they changed I their did stuff. receive some nice feedback on my own stream, and then I was on the EDH Rec podcast stream last night, and several people said, it was such a good thing. We're so glad you did that. So it seems to be really well received yeah. by, by everybody. Oh, that's and I good. Think it, it's better for our content too because it's fresh on our minds we've got so much to talk about that happened in the last 12 hours we're more likely to we're more likely to give hot takes will regret if the news comes out this day <laughs> true, <laughs> <that's okay>. true. <laughs> Look, i hear about hot takes i made from like 10 12 years ago and that's okay you know why because we're having fun you know yeah if, if i were to have not said three dudes seriously and lost my mind we wouldn't have been able to jokingly refer to it many true. times. And if over I had years. said that Modern Horizons was a Commander Legends right. set, <laughs> that you, you couldn't get up for it, and you'd have no yeah. idea why it's going to do anything, it was fantastic. That's what we get to do here. We get to have yeah. some fun. But we we do get. Uh, there was a lot of stuff, and it's like happening still as we're as we're going recording this show. Like yes. we were doing the pre-show, and we were like, "Oh, a new uh, Mystic Archive card came out." It's so like it's great. That's fantastic. So bringing up here on the the website, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, hmm, which one which one to do first. Let's do some School of Mages mechanics. Okay. Uh, learn and lesson. <clears throat> and that might come up next week. You never know. Uh, oh, learning a card. Ooh, you never I don't Evan know. There's gonna be lots the, of there's gonna be Evan lots of lessons the, and learns. Who knows? I don't know. But, but learning says and it's on the screen now. Whenever a creature enters, or just for example, the first day of class, it's a red and generic mana for a common instant. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on it, and it gains haste until end of turn, but it has learn. Learn says you may reveal a lesson card you own from outside the game and put it into your hand or discard a card to draw a card. So in Commander, you can't have lesson cards that exist right. outside the game. You don't have a sideboard or nothing. Which is but, too bad, but so you're just gonna you're gonna rummage or whatever, <clears throat> which is fine. Aaron knows all about rummaging's dope. I am draw. keeping an eye on this one because anything that says discard and draw, like yep. I, I'm here. And so particularly this one, cards, I was on yeah. Twitter today and I was thinking like, so wait a minute. So if I discard, this will probably never see competitive play, but it'll be fun to think about. So if I if I play this, discard a stink we dimp, dredge the stink we dimp, and let's say hit a narc amoeba, that narc amoeba is coming into play with a plus one plus one yeah. counter on it and haste. And haste. Like yeah. I want nothing more than to learn and dredge something. I got well, to live the dream a, the other day and dredge off a monarch trigger, which was really nice. Basically. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Sorry. So now that this has all sorts of potential, but the, the learning part of it lets you reveal a lesson card. Well, um, this was a really interesting thematic choice. There are colorless lessons that represent the first year of the school, which is mm -hmm. everybody has to take the remedial, right. you know, standard <laughs> stuff like expanded anatomy. So for three generic mana, it's a sorcery lesson that puts two plus plus one counters on target creature. It gains vigilance till end of turn. There's a bunch of these that are kind of very standard, simple, straightforward. And I thought Thematically, that was brilliant. Like, that was fantastic. Cola spells for your first year. Yeah, I think it's a, whole, a, a great idea. I think it really will make the limited environment super interesting um, because you're going to have essentially wish boards for all of your limited decks. You're going to be able to, you know, have like three, four, five options. It's going to be like drafting contraptions in Unstable Draft. It's going to be like drafting Snowlands in your uh, uh, Kaldheim Draft. Like we've talked about how it's so difficult to cut down to 23 cards. Well, you don't have to when you need to pick up seven other cards. And so I think that this is going to add a lot of depth to those environments. 
Um, not to mention the fact that all of the learn cards effectively replace themselves in in a lot of cases. Yeah. Um, so I think it's going to be a ton of fun. Yeah, be able to go get you know extra spells and to have them be there just ready and waiting for you. And of course, you can put the source the lessons in your deck if you want to display them as spells in your deck. That's cool too. Um, and that's you know a nice sort of way that they're uh, you know useful in that way. Yeah. Um, Magecraft is interesting. Magecraft is the artist formerly known as Prowess. This only triggers. The ability triggers on an instant or sorcery spell being played, um, right. and there are or a few copied. out there. Or copied, yeah, sorry, or copied, um, which is also weird. But also notes that like Wizards has learned that copying spells is like whatever, and well, we've yeah. known this for years. Like it's whatever. Um, but for example, eager first year here for a white and generic mana, you have a two two. Uh, so it's a bear. It's a common human wizard with magecraft. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Now, there's a black green apprentice that has magecraft of you lose, you gain a life, your opponent loses a life, which right. means it now uh, chain of smog is a ten to fifteen dollar uncommon. Oh god! Because chain of smogging yourself when that card exists on the battlefield means you auto win. Uh, and I ac absolutely expected to see uh, legacy play because it's a two mana two two and it's a two mana spell. So for four mana, you just instantly win the game if they have nothing. So if you can clear the way, you know, why, or if you got a force back up, like it's just boop, you lose. And so like. Good, good luck. Make sure they yeah. discard all their cards before you try to stop the chain of smogs. <clears throat> otherwise, they'll force you. Um, chain but, yeah. of smog started climbing when uh, Professor Onyx, the Liliana yeah. Planeswalker, was mm -hmm. revealed because people were like, ooh, two card combo that costs eight, still good enough in Commander. <laughs> now we have two uh, half as much mana, two card four mana combo that can do effectively For eight the same mana, thing. you can never get invited <laughs> to another Commander game again. Right. <laughs> you too. Chain of smog. Great. Yep. Can be silently removed from the rooms. Um, yeah. The, and, you know, honestly, it, it, this is something that occurred to me. I was like, has no one, no one has literally ever just done Monastery Swiss Spear, Chain of Smog myself 10,000 times, kill you? Like, Well, because, no, Prowess doesn't copy the copies. It only copies oh, the spells. Oh, it doesn't copy. Oh, you're right. You're right. Okay. Well, there so you go. So Magecraft is demonstrably different. That's Magecraft is uh, absolutely. Different. Okay. Well, there you go. Cast or copy is definitely huge. So uh, we have some really cool Magecraft cards like Archmage Emeritus. This feels very Urza ish in many ways. For mm -hmm. two blue and two generic mana, it's a 2 2 rare human wizard. And Magecraft, draw a card. That is that's huge. That's a powerful. Powerful one right there. And yeah. it, it's, I mean, I love the naming in this set. It's very Magic College, like introduction to something, mm -hmm. first day of class. Like, I love the naming pop convention. Pop quiz pop is a quiz great hot one. Shot. That's yep, fantastic. It's so good. Yeah, I've, I've been really enjoying that. But you have the another mechanic here that is introduced as an evergreen mechanic. So get used to it of Ward. This is basically a fixed hex proof. And there's lots of really cool reasons. There's a whole article they wrote about why they're like Ward exists and what it does and why it exists the way it does. Um, but basically it says Ward of a cost. Whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, counter it unless that player pays the cost. So for Waterfall Aerialist, it's a four mana three one flyer with ward of two and so this to me is like the design space is huge there's a reason they were like this is evergreen expect to see it everywhere this yeah. solves a ton of problems as to why you would play any creature that doesn't have an immediate onboard effect it's like well the effect is sweet and it protects itself through a ward ward is a reason to not chase waterfalls if i wow if i may say that wow so. Well, all I know is think of a, you know, think of a one mana two one or one mana, you know, or a two mana four four or something that says, you know, ward of four, ward of five. Right. Like you can really make these <clears throat> one mana one one and ward it doesn't go high away. number is like a new bogle. So. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't go away. My first thought when I saw this was, oh, it's like Kira. Just it's like a Kira effect. But that's like first spell or things like that. This is just always on. Like that's mm -hmm. really powerful. Right. And just, you know, think of a ward sacrifice a creature. Ward sacrifice a land. Ward reveal your hand. Like there's just yep. a var you know, ward mill yourself four cards. Like there's just, just a whole variety of cool ways you can interact with this. And I'm super pumped with what they're going to do with ward because, man, skies are the limit. Um, the modal double face cards come back. Uh, let's see. 
Zendikar, they were all lands. In, uh, in Kaldheim, they were the gods slash the artifacts. Yep. And this time, snarl. they are, there's, well, we're, we're getting to snarls. Um, snarls in a minute. <clears throat> but we do have. This time, <clears throat> they're all professors. They're all professors, right? Whether they're mythic or not, I guess. And I mean, Professor Onyx isn't, but you know what I mean. They're still professors at the college, and it's really cool to see I remember yeah, a bunch of them. Go ahead. I remember seeing on Twitter, I think it was Maro who said this, that explained that um, the reason there are two and the reason there are different is to emphasize the, you know, innate conflict that comes with the color pairing and with the with the, the guild or the class itself which i thought right. was really cool yeah. really really interesting take on what double face cards can represent it's not one being transforming into a werewolf it's not one place that looks different depending on what time of day you go it's actually two different people like these are two characters that exist in the same space together but showing the dichotomy of the class as a student is a cool representation now, yeah. how does this work in Commander? Like, can you change who you cast throughout the game, or are you yeah. locked into... It's just like having Valky as your Commander. You can cast the Tybalt side if you want to. You can okay. cast either side. And it still has the same tax that happens yeah. on <clears> the other side. The card goes to the command zone, so... Yep. Yeah, so, and these cards are, are full of words. I won't I won't read them out to you, but, you know... Another wordy set, yeah. It's very, yeah. well, I think we need to get used to it, quite frankly. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, these cards do a whole bunch, and the red-white is really neat, and uh, I'll take it. So, I, I love modal double face cards. Please, just just keep giving them. I don't care. I love They're them. They're great. They're great. Um, <clears throat> so, let's look a little bit here about collecting Strixhaven School of Mages. Okay. As, as usual, Wizards needs a nice matrix chart to figure out where your cards are coming from, which is crazy, because the Strixhaven, of course, has the mystical archive that we've talked mm. about, which is, these are incredibly sweet, awesome old spells, because uh, I think the lore is the library in the middle of the plane has every spell ever in oh. the library. It's there. So these are some of them that they've sort of plucked out to be awesome or whatever. Be a dangerous uh, plot device. Yeah, I don't care. Um, but like, you know, in terms of like, whatever. Uh, but Demonic Tutor showing up in this, the super cool Japanese frames, which are amazing. Which I yep. think they did confirm is coming to Magic Online. Is it? Oh, okay, cool. Thought I saw that. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, but... that's super cool. Um, but I know that the Mystical Archive is coming to Magic Arena. Seven of the cards are banned, and we'll talk about those. Um, <laughs> and what's not banned, which is also kind of hilarious. Um, <laughs> yeah, so Swords to Plowshares is not legal. Demonic Tutor is not going to be legal. And Lightning Bolt, for example, is also not going to be legal. But uh, there's some that coming later that are legal, which are silly. Um, but, you know, they have the, the set boosters and they have the draft boosters, and it still bothers me that Wizards has pushed the set boosters so hard uh, because it's just a, a product that not a lot of people are asking for, certainly at the game store level, and maybe Amazon's destroying it. But at the game store level, we want to pre-order draft booster boxes, which you can't get until the actual release date. You can only pre-order and pick up during the pre-release period set booster boxes, which is messed up. I wish they would fix that, but whatever. Uh, you do have your super cool new planeswalkers, which are awesome. And look at look at Shadrick's silver quill. This guy is like yep. built for commander. Look at how commandery this card is. Mm -hmm. It could not get more commandery. Like a lot of the legends. I mean, the commander cards. Uh, we saw a bunch of the commander cards. Um, a lot of them are just very clearly not playable in two player, but like really interesting for commander. And this yeah. is one of them. Uh, this is the Silver Quill, like legendary, literally the Elder Dragon. That's what's on the, the top. Foundering, the founding dragon of yeah. Silver Quill. Yes. Uh, it's a black, a white, and three generic mana for a 2 5 mythic legendary Elder Dragon with flying and double strike. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may choose two of the following abilities. Each mode must target a different player. So target player makes a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying. Target player draws a card and loses one life. Or target player puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature they control. That is just a gigantic game of diplomacy. Like you're just, who's getting what and what do you owe me for it? Because those three abilities are not necessarily even in scale. I want to play this card and I want to target myself with the inkling. And then I want to say I inked myself. Just because... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me I'm, I'm working hard for you here. Me like, me your waitress. Me. <laughs> me me. Yeah, so they are bringing back the art cards and the signature art cards. So that's at least something they've drawn out to the point where we're seeing them in Strixhaven. Yeah. Um, they're, that's pretty. They're fine. You know, they're cool. They're okay. People love dragons. I mean, yeah. they're not huge sellers for what it's worth, but it they okay. sell for a little bit. And honestly, anything in a magic pack, you know, is worth something. Even I mean, I think that the big Elder something. Dragons are less about selling and more about getting a person who's never seen a magic card 
go, ooh, Elder Dragon. Yeah. Right? Like, th that's an eye catcher. Um, and I think that it does a good job of it. And turning the, uh, you know, the founders of the schools into dragons and having dragons be the founders of the schools is a really cool uh, uh, story story point. Yeah. So the uh, collector boosters, of course, are coming back around. Uh, and you can see here the, on the screen, there's a variety of ways of things you can get in all these magical slots. Uh, the this point is, is a lot. Yeah. The point is, yeah. it's 20 plus dollar booster. I've Blacked has a out. variety of stuff. I've blacked out and forgotten where I was by it's the time okay. I looked at this I think chart. The long and short of it is that one of the biggest, you know, one of the biggest things that's different about this is that there are going to be foil etched versions of Ooh. the mystical archive cards that are found oh, in the collector okay. boosters, okay. not just foils, not just you can get the Japanese alternate arts in there. So that is pretty neat. They had the etched foils that showed up first in Commander Legends. They're doing it again, um, okay. and so those are, you know, those are super cool blingy cards we can enjoy. Um, let's see here. Do -ba do we talked about the product? Well, you we can enjoy them the with the humidifier. <laughs> hmm? Yes, they Pringle. They're as not as that they, Pringly. It's they're just, very Pringly. Keep, very keep, Pringly. Well, keep there have been a couple hydrated. of. They're so Pringly. You could put them in your mouth like Pringles and do the duck bill thing. You know, how you take like two Pringles. I've seen some people uh, who've done some decent experimentation on how to unPringle them on Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, which is. Pop, which is uh, which a is a needed sign. thing. It's fine. Um, Holy yeah. goodness! I'm going to a steakhouse and making your own steak. Like if I'm, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> like right. if I'm going out to eat, I'm not making my own dinner. If I buy right. foils, I'm not. Yeah, I would that. rather like, it if I when I opened a magic card, it just was able to be played immediately. <laughs> And and for the for the, yeah for those in chat JP or JPN for Japan come on y'all what's wrong with y'all look as we speak as we are literally live and I lo I loaded the page once more so we could talk about it Primal Command shows up which Ooh. is going to be insane and historic uh, Crux of Fate showed up and these are all the mystical archive cards which are awesome Infuriate looks super cool Memory Lapse looks cool where Ruben asks who plays it and we go yeah oh, what wait, wait I don't know does it I don't care it's fine but Mind's Desire showed up today Wizards proudly noting on the arena account not only is this a mystical archive is it going to be in packs you're going to be able to play it and it's going to be legal and historic Lightning Bolt Storm no. and Mind's Desire yes what is happening up is down left is right what did I do wrong yep. Didn't they say there was a storm card in standard? There, Did well, no, there's going to be a new storm card in the commander set. In the commander set, yeah, okay, it will so not yeah. be legal in standard now because okay. it's busted. Yeah, so the 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 theory, not the theory, the story beat that every spell that's ever been cast is in the Mystic Archive. It includes Crux of Fate, which mm -hmm. is a huge turning point in the the history of of Cons of Tarkir. It includes Urza's Rage, which, of course, is a huge story beat in the Invasion storyline. Like, the Elder spell is just in this library sitting there. You know, Urza's Ruinous Blast is just over there chilling, you know, waiting for this a thing has second the elder year spell? to check it out. That. No, I, I'm saying not the cards. Oh. I'm saying the spells. Sure. The spells well, are in the library. Well, take a look at this spell, Abundant Harvest. This is from Modern Horizons 2. This is the <laughs> only card that's actually sort of future previewed. Uh, it's based around the card Abundance, which is on the reserve list, so they can't print anymore. But they can give you a one-mana, one-time effect. The enchantment, the old enchantment, used to be a four-mana enchantment at the beginning of your uh, upkeep. You chose land or non-land. You revealed until you found one, and you put it in your hand. This does it as a one-shot for one green mana. It's a rare sorcery. You choose land or non-land land reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card of the chosen kind put that card in your so hand belcher? and the rest on the bottom in any random order so. i mean any deck that tends to have you know kind of a, a skewed rate of like either sorry that's my bad abundance is apparently on it was in 10th sorry. edition i was uh, no i was just saying so like a deck like tron perhaps you know if you want to sure. name like creature tron runs like worm coil engine i think that's it <laughs> and so yeah. if you already have tron assembled they're already doing the green thing for ancient strings and sylvan's crying once you have your tron or if you're on the way there you're just like whoop creature get your depth you know get your get your worm coil engine or get whatever um, or the opposite you mentioned a deck like belcher um you know a deck that has the opposite problem it runs very few lands mm -hmm. and so if you know you need a very specific land or even just one land you could also do this too so uh, I'm excited. It looks like they're not, it looks like they're going to keep their feet on the pedal for, for Modern Horizons yeah. too. This counterspell that somehow doesn't have talk to the hand as the flavor text, um, which is fine. I was thinking stop in the name of love, but that's good too. That works yeah. too. I'm okay with that. Uh, shock and lightning bolt in the same 
sort of right. mini set, which is <laughs> the mystical archive, which is fine. Once upon sure. a time, I collected shocks. I must have had. Oh, did you? Five hundred at one point. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that Urza's Rage, though, like it's such a <laughs> Urza's Rage. That is way too good of a card, or oh. way too good of art for Urza's Rage. That like, lightning bolt yeah. looks amazing. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. So, and between the, the, the English Lightning Bolt, the Japanese Lightning Bolt, I mean, the Time Warp, that's Duress. fantastic. Yeah. Oh. Time Warp coming to Historic is very, very exciting. Is it? I think so. Okay. I think so. I think Time Warp decks are interesting. I think that, you know, you want to have a Time Warp deck, Time Warp deck that isn't Nexus of Fate. Yeah, we have a whole bunch of new cards here. If you want to talk about any of them, uh, please let me know. There's a, um, like I, said, I mean, they all look, they all look like so much fun. You know, I was keeping up with all the tweets that were going out today and there's a lot of possibility here. Obviously, I love learn. I'm really excited to see what what that's going to lead to. Um, I love the flavor so far. I love the art. Um, I, I'm really interested to see where this goes. Wow. I would say the one that I would keep my eye on the most is probably the new Kazmina Planeswalker. Uh, Kazmina Enigma Sage. Colorless green, blue, legendary planeswalker that's never been a problem before right no um, not once each other planeswalker you control has the loyalty abilities of kazmina and okay. it, and she has a plus two scry one which is pretty cool uh, minus x make a zero zero green and blue fractal creature token put x plus one plus one counters on it and minus eight search your library for an instant or sorcery card that shares a color with this planeswalker exile that card then shuffle you may cast that card without paying its mana cost uh, this with the Teferi that lets you use loyalty abilities of it on every turn means you're just plus twoing Teferi every turn. Like that yep. seems super dangerous. Uh, I think Kazmina has a chance to be to be a player in standard. I think if you can go up a little bit, Evan, I saw something that really caught my eye. Um, sure. Well, also, the, one of the things that might have caught your eye is that uh, Zaphi Thunder Conductor is actually Thunder Collector <laughs> in the yes, text. I saw that. That's, I would totally do a gender swap cosplay of that because I do have the, you know, sort of my chemical romancy jacket and I do have the crazy curly hair, so I could do that. But I do like the Orzov Bird Lady. I think she's really yes, cool. So and the Boros cool. Commander. I have, I do not have a Boros Commander. I don't think there's anything about me that's Boros. I, I would like to, I, I thought about making a Bell Borka deck because I thought that was really interesting, but Boros and I can play with my graveyard like I'm yeah. like that's a card artifacts and yeah. graveyards yeah yeah, yeah for those who don't know and this is wizards trying to bring red white into different directions mm -hmm. Os gear the reconstructor is a red white and two generic mana for a 4-4 mythic legendary giant artificer this is the red white Commander decks commander mm -hmm. uh, has vigilance for one generic mana sacrifice an artifact colon target creature you control gets plus two plus oh until end of turn and for X generic mana tap X on artifact card with mana value X from your graveyard colon create two tokens that are copies of the exiled card. And that's one of those cards I feel like you don't even have to like try to break. Like that's one of those that like you're already probably running Wayfarer's Bobble or Commander Sphere or Mind Stone. And like you could just sort of play Commander and then yeah. just sort of have this ability that gets you all this value. Like, oh, I love it. You want to play Commander. Okay, okay, Brina. All right, Brina. Brina <laughs> the Demagogue. There's going to be a Brina at your table. Just you wait. Yeah. It's a black, a white, and a generic mana for a 1-3 Mythic Legendary Bird Warlock that has flying. Here we go. <clears throat> Whenever a player attacks one of your opponents that may include you may not mm -hmm. if that opponent <clears throat> has more life than another of your opponents that attacking player draws a card and you put two plus one plus one counters on a creature you control what is mm -hmm. going on like with the this cursed political phraseology mess? yeah it's pretty it's a lot like aggressive Orzov. which you're, is like hmm. they're an opponent i'm a player you're the player also, of the opponent the creature type combinations i mean i love bird warlock sure. bird warlock is a great one giant artificer dryad spectacular druid. work dryad <laughs> druid is the winner to me dryad i think dryad druid. druid just makes my heart happy Mm. Um, it's that's, just a, that's just a lovely combination. A little silly, I'll take it. But they do have we, I mean, you know, with Rowan Scholar of Sparks and Will Scholar of Frost, yep. we do have our first ever double sided Planeswalker Moldal Moldal double faced card, and is a yep. Planeswalker, which is cool. And I'll take cool it. One. The cards themselves are fine. Again, is they're it, covered I, in words. Does anybody chat help me out here? <laughs> does anybody actually like Rowan and Will? Like, I feel like Wizards keeps trying to get us to care about them. And I don't know anybody that's like, hell yeah, I love Rowan and Will. Like, I don't know anybody who like stands these two, but like, damn it, Wizards is trying to like 
you're going to take it and you're going to like it. I just, I don't know anybody who feels strongly about these two characters. It's because like, they've just never really gone anywhere. The Royal Scions somehow was a bad card. I don't know what happened. I just feel like you don't see the same love for like Liliana or even Garrick or even Veraska. Even time. We've only only had, we've only had like two years with Will and Rowan, right? (laughs) Has it only been two? It's going to be two more. It's more like three because they were in the, they were in Battle Bond. Right. But like, we didn't know much about them in Battle Bond. We've had Liliana around for 15 years, right? Like, we know her. We've been with her. We've seen her trials and tribulations. Who's the character? I mean, there's got to be some other commander that's been out for, like, a shorter time that, like, we, we, that is made we actually like a split. actively Kaya. Like. Kaya is somebody, I think, that sure. made a, has only made very few appearances, and people are like, yeah, Kaya. Like, Kaya was also <laughs> around many years, thanks to conspiracy and stuff. You know, right? Well, or no, yeah. was it, does it take I the crown? Think of, I don't know. I feel, like, I feel like there are planeswalkers that have been out for the same amount of time or less that got more of a reaction than... True, than Will and <clears> Rowan. <throat> Will and Rowan have not gotten I mean, Oko, a big reaction. as a character, not as a card. I feel like people latched onto Oko as a character in a way that they didn't latch onto Will and Rowan Kenra. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. It's fine. Like, they make your instances and sorceries cheaper to cast. Whatever. You know, I'm still waiting for a giant planeswalker. That's what I want. I want big old a giant. giant. We've seen giant creatures. And well, where's my goblin planeswalker? Wizards? Yeah, where's a god- well, goblin? Didn't where's we have Duretti? coming back? You had Duretti. Duretti, right? That's, well, that's true. We player. have Duretti. That makes yeah, That's a guy. Let's okay, talk about fine. some snarls, okay? The, wow. The rest... Duretti erasure. I won't stand for those. Listen. Seriously. What are you doing, dude? Wait, what, what is this world where I'm defending goblins? Like, what has happened to us? <laughs> You know, five years will happen to you in the podcast. Um, <laughs> look, we have the other half of the Shadows over Innistrad cycle of rare lands. Yeah. These are the enemy check lands or something. I can't believe they were called at the time. Um, um, now we have the Snarls, yes. which is just reveal mm-hmm. the land types. So, for example, uh, Vine Glimmer Snarl. <laughs> there are the five for the, all the, the enemy colors. It's Hand a rare lands, I'm being told. Hand, Hand lands, lands, like okay. Port Town. Sure. It's a rare land that says as it enters the battlefield, you may reveal a forest or island card from your hand. If you don't, it enters the battlefield tapped and it taps to add a green or a blue. So Great. those are okay. They're fine. They're fine. It's an enemy color set. I mean, if there's any time they're going to throw in the enemy color versions of these, sure. They're, I like calling them snarls. I like going back and and uh, changing history and calling the old ones snarls. I think yeah. that that's pretty great. We also have non-basic lands with basic land types on them in standard so our mana bases might look a little weird it's we true. have this our tax snow duels yeah our triumphs, can triumphs. Can all of our untapped. duels enter tapped and these enter untapped if we ex- if we reveal them it's a bit weird yeah that's big big game so uh they also unveiled all the apprentices for each school which was really sweet they all have different mage craft abilities which are needed again the black green one of draining for one in Chain of Smog equals GG. Um, but those are really sweet. And even had a lesson that's a rare lesson. This isn't just like a colorless whatever with yeah. Confront the Past. of a black and X, it's a rare sorcery lesson that says, choose one, return target Planeswalker card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield or remove X, or I'm sorry, remove twice X loyalty counters from target Planeswalker and opponent Oof. controls. I love this card. That's a cool card. And it it's like, yeah, this is such a cool story moment. And like taps into the Liliana being Liliana. And which... taps into the audience. Cause I was one of the people that really loved Liliana and, and thought honestly, she should have died that that was a great way to cap off her storyline. And I did feel like she was robbed a little bit by Gideon kind of jumping in there. And also I like that they're continuing to explore the black design space of removing counters. Remember that one, when that was kind of taboo where we had it on like throw mm-hmm. parasite, right. <laughs> you know, and now it's stuff, like, like Aether snap or whatever. Yeah, now they're kind of playing with it a little bit more. And I think this is great. And I'm anxious to see beautiful art. I love what the card does. And I'm anxious to see where the story goes with that. And yeah. if you ever, ever cast pop quiz and do not say hot shot right after it, pop go, quiz, watch, hot shot. go watch speed already. Get yeah. some culture. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. it's a silly, <laughs> great movie. All right, it is what it is. I do all like right. that they're leaning into like we know who we are, like the Battle Bond style, Last mm-hmm. Man Standing, uh, you know, play of the game in Battle Bond. Very similar of like first day of class, pop quiz, like 
kind of a little not taking itself too seriously. And as we said before, we I, you know I think Wizards is best when they let their hair down. And you know I feel like the best sets, some of the better sets we've seen over the last couple of years have been the ones that have had the pop culture references and and haven't taken themselves that seriously. And so I'm glad to see that that you know they seem to be receptive of that and aware of that. And I'm hoping that for going. like final exam, <laughs> right? Like, like that would be a cool removal spell. Yeah. I think that they probably won't name a card oral argument, but. <laughs> That's that's Look, just because we got it. We got to keep moving. We've spoke plenty about streak saving. It's a cool set. We learned all sorts of cool stuff about it just this morning, this afternoon. Uh, so that was great. Uh, it's interesting to note here. Rosewater says specifically <coughs> there are no crossover plans with any other property. Sure. Harry Potter at all. Yeah. So like not even close. Don't talk about it. We don't no say the HP hats. words. Nope. Yeah. We don't even. We're just going to give you scarves and right. Ask you to fall into a house like, and talk it's about fine. the founding members. It's of the, fine. We're going to play it. We're going to play a game called Mage Tower, y'all. Not <laughs> quit it. It's fine. Mage craft. Yeah, yeah. you got to go find a thing and go to your other person's Look, whatever. bag sure. cereal. Look, all I know is moving on here to Guy of the Townsfolk Arena we have, we have came to mobile devices. I have hmm. I have Arena on my phone as we Amazing. live and breathe. We did it. Look at you. That's fantastic. So, like, Sweet. go in if you What's just. What's your wallpaper? Uh, it's a weird, freaking stuff. Yeah, I, don't, I got. A it's a waifu, over. isn't it? No, it's, a it's not a waifu. But it, <laughs> it, I, I'll it's happily share in the Discord. You'll check it out. But either the point is, I have Arena installed as of today. I did win that pie bet. Look, I love you, developers. You're cool, but they asked way too much of you, and that was not going to happen in the last year. It's fine. What? But it's but. here, and it's awesome. As far as I know, I haven't heard a lot of people say it was a serious problem. Like a bunch of people with Android are like, it was hard to yeah, you know, move good. things and use things. As far as I know, it works amazing on iPads because it's just built for tablet. Just, you know, touch good. the cards, throw them out there. That sounds awesome. I mean, I downloaded Hearthstone the first time because I could play it on my iPad while playing at the poker table. Mm -hmm. Like this is going to be huge for the growth of magic. Yes. And I think that to think otherwise was a little disingenuous. Like, I think that, you know, them, them saying it back in the day of like, oh, it's not a priority, was them trying to hide a How little big bit of, a priority of their it was. embarrassment that it hadn't happened, right. I think. Uh, but now it's here, yeah. and it's great from all things that I've heard. Um, among, among Magic the Gathering related technolo technological rollouts this week, this one was a good one. Yeah. So well done, Wizards. There you go. You did it. I mean, March 25th, 2021, they released mobile iOS MTG there Arena. There it is. Way to go. At uh, Magic Online, uh, they are bringing back the all access tokens uh, for the upcoming vintage PTQ on April 4th. So ooh. if you enjoyed that, if you enjoyed having access to the God account and every card on Magic Online and mm -hmm. the opportunity to play in older formats, you should definitely take advantage of that because they were a really big hit um, and they continue to be a good thing. And um, they allow people to play formats they wouldn't otherwise get a chance to play. So the more you do that, the more Wizards will, will keep giving us that. So yay. Very nice. I do remember that i owe owe you a pie bet oh did you take that okay. one i know that yeah, there was at least you know, one singer, fan of the show no. oh the baron singer one too I, yeah. well i didn't do the arena pie bet but i owe you a pie bet for baron singer sure this was from commander of legends i think it commander was Commander Legends. um yeah so you of course can you can get the the free the the, the art card style and whatnot from kazmina you can get the mastery pass version that gets you to a bunch of limited events or you can get the one with 50 packs for 50 bucks and, and all that stuff um you and get if, the ornithopter pet and you get an ornithopter pet if you'll just as Ooh. i understand if you'll just log in to your mobile arena and then you can you know go back in wherever and you'll see it there so that should be pretty sweet um or a walking book or a walking codex or whatever here a codex yeah. pet which is very D, &D looking yeah that thing is dope now the mystical archive on arena oh okay which means you can draft and play swords to plowshares in your limited deck in strict <laughs> yeah. that's a thing you can do just to be clear i'm not and sure how much i love I that. mean, look, I would have a demonic tutor that has a super cool card style. That's great. It's a good thing I can't play it anywhere. Um, except, I guess, bra historic brawl? I don't know. Um, mm. But so far, Channel, Counterspell, Dark Ritual, Demonic Tutor, Lightning Bolt, and Swords to Plowshares are the only Mystical Archive cards that you can't play in Historic on Arena. So okay. again, the ones we talked about earlier uh, were like, wow, that's, that's really cool and came out of nowhere. Well, now you can play them uh, on Historic as well. So that's great. Yeah. So this is all gladiator, really fun stuff. Apparently, Leland Gladiator. Got gla Gladiator. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Now That's the a format arena, that I am aware of. Hey, and <laughs> and about a week or so, the arena cube returns. I'm pretty pumped for that. 
Ooh. That'll be fantastic. Like and that. yeah. So and Historic Brawl is coming from for a Coldheim festival for an emote. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, what is that nightmare fuel right there? This is wizards trying to catch up uh, to Legends of Runeterra. Legends of Runeterra had these from day one, which is these little emotes that, you know, promote an emotion of some sort and which (laughs) we don't really have or use. And to use them in arena, like one of the reasons why they work so well in Legends of Runeterra, if anyone so happened to be listening who has anything to do with this, is that they were easy to access. To access these in arena, I got to like click on my head. I got to click on an arrow. I got to click on another arrow because who in the hell is saying those Zendikar phrasings like a mad person? And then I have to see the right one I got. And then I got to click on it. And I hope to God that somewhere in all that time period, they understand what this emote is even referring to because it took me so long to get there. It is a lot. Okay. (laughs) It's a bunch. We deal with stuff in the show. All right. (sighs) Look, either way, that was fun. I like the way Arena's going. I appreciate them bringing the Mystical Archive to Arena, regardless. You know, because again, you can play Demonic Tutor in your deck if you draft it. It's Strixhaven. That's awesome. I'll take that. Um, let's see here. Last little bit here. We do have uh, MTG Dogs that's being sponsored that's by right. CoolStuffInc.com. Yes! Once sponsored again. Sponsored by Cool Stuff, ladies right. and gentlemen. Love it. Sponsored by Cool Stuff. Megan it stuff is, of happen. course, March Madness for most sports fans out there. But if you aren't a fan of a round ball, perhaps I can interest you in round, adorable puppy dogs. There and this you. is amazing. This is this is put together by Mike Lineman, Vorthos Mike, and mm-hmm. people from all over the community have submitted their dogs for consideration. And um, you get to, you know, he pairs up to multiple dogs, of, uh, pairings of dogs, and you get little pictures of them. And he writes these amazing descriptions. And I'm not even a dog person, and even I follow this. And even I vote <laughs> for this. And so yep. this is a really great way. You know, Lord knows people love to fight about things on social media, but this is one of the rare things that people, brings people together and everybody can agree that these dogs are adorable. I love that the regions are Lorwyn, Chandelar, Alara, <laughs> and Florida. Oh, <laughs> magical oh my God. land. I didn't oh, even notice. Mike is brilliant. <laughs> He's very smart. That's brilliant. Yes, he came to me and I'm like, yes, cool stuff. And the dogs were, were in like Flynn. Uh, the owner, <laughs> the owner of Cool Stuff Inc. has uh, has some dogs and they're terrific. And so, yeah, this is a uh, home run oh for goodness. cool, fun stuff that we can have fun with in 2021. Mm-hmm. Let's bring back some more of that. Uh, all right, so let's see. Gather the townsfolk is over. Let's take a look here at Desperate Ravings. Now, there was a really interesting blog of talk. Yeah, there's there's so much you can pick up on on the Tumblr, markrosewater.tumblr.com. He, man, he drops this stuff all the time. You got to be looking for it. You got to be thinking about it. When someone says, so 2021 has five standard sets instead of four, but it was said that standard won't have more cards than usual. Can you explain this? And he said, no rotation window will have more than four standard legal sets. So that means is the window moving at the end of the year what does that mean for us as magic players what does it mean for organized play who had a serious problem trying to speed up any sorts of rotations of sets right whereas magic whereas arena really really wants to accelerate the release and the rotation of sets to try to keep things as fresh as possible for as long as possible yeah i i mean i've said i think that um that this means that we're gonna have uh Kaldheim for less time. I think that we're going to have Strixhaven, D and D set, Adventures in whatever. Right. Uh, First Innistrad, Innistrad number one, is... Innistrad number two, and when Innistrad number two comes out, that means Kaldheim rotates. Doesn't it? No, it means Theros rotates. No, Kaldheim. Well, the four sets. One. You said four sets in standard at any one time, right? All right. Well, you so, have you have right now Strixhaven. So so wait. So by the end of the year. This, the the four most recent sets are going to be Strixhaven, D and D, Innistrad, Innistrad. Hmm. You said four sets, right? I, it does say no rotation window will have more than four standard legal sets. So again, so that means Kaldheim, when the second Innistrad set comes out, will rotate. Yeah. That's how I'm reading it. I maybe I don't obviously they're going to clear this up as, as things get closer, but this is one of those things where I'm like, that reads weird and I don't really get it, but uh, we hope it works out. Um, speaking of crazy things, I didn't really understand, but I certainly loved the MTG arena commercial. The Japanese one is yeah. amazing. Yeah. So you got to get on this. We so have a link good. in the show notes. I'll put a link here in the chat. It's spectacular. 
I mean, it the was. advertising department for Arena has been just gangbusters, whether it's English, whether it's Well, even Japanese. Strixhaven. We had Danny Trejo and Patton Oswalt. Patton Oswalt and Maddie Oswalt. Ladies and gentlemen. Like, I, did, I never thought I'd see the day where Danny Trejo, you know, Machete, would say Vorin Clicks. Like, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> You need to add boring legs to your deck. So yes. <laughs> yes. Machete, I do for uh. sure. So that was fantastic. Um, moving on here to a little bit of Speaking of day nine splash damage. Um, okay. Look, you know, my mama taught me if you ain't got nothing nice to say, wait till your podcast is on, then just dish. Or come just sit go. next to me. Just go, just go nuts. <laughs> Grandma, you saying the same thing, but no, like, like, like Magic Legends was one of those things where, like, when I heard about it, I tried my best to get involved. I couldn't, I couldn't. And then later, when it's sort of like, well, there's an alpha now, I, you know, tried to pull a little strings. Hey, I got into there. Okay, cool. Didn't really like the video game. Didn't really like it. I know they had some weird, like, you know, uh, embargo thing for talking about it. So I didn't want to, like, talk out of turn or do something weird, get myself in trouble. So I was like, I ain't going to say nothing. We'll wait for, like, everyone else to come out. Maybe I'm a crazy person and I just, I'm the one who didn't like it and everybody else loves it. But it kind of turns out no one else liked it much either. Now, like, this article came out on PC Gamer uh, where they mentioned that one of the top posts on the Magic Legends subreddit is called Fastest Uninstall of My Life. Uh, Day9, who is big in the Magic Gathering scene, commentator, I assume he's sponsored to some degree, came out and just flat out called it awful uh, after live streaming it, which is hard to, which is rare. It's, it's very rare that you see somebody who's so closely affiliated with Wizards just come out against something that hard. And um, I just haven't heard anything good about this, even from the beginning. I remember when the the, the pre-release event, which was very confusing, by the way, it was mm. like, so we have these streamers and they're going to have keys, but they're only good for like a day. Like it was very because confusing. Because the next day, anybody can get in. Because anybody could get in. So that was kind of pointless. And then there were technical problems where there were people that were supposed to be part of this big kind of pre-release event. They couldn't even get it to work because the combination of all their streaming software plus this, they were like, I can't even run this thing. And so, um, you know, it was interesting seeing the people that were a part of this, like, you know, even Ali Antrazi that were like trying to be polite about it, that were like, so... I look forward to seeing what they do next with it. Let's hope they improve <laughs> um, it I, just, in I didn't future. see anybody come out of this like, you know, like I mentioned about being really excited about Rowan and 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 Will. I didn't see anybody that was like, yeah, legends. It was just like <laughs> you can't like not only is there not a single piece of wizards you know magic art in it the, the mana costs don't match and the mana doesn't mean anything like i appreciated that they not actually kind of you know said what i was trying to sort of verbalize which is there's not interesting decisions because there's almost no decisions it's mm -hmm. just keep slamming the spell button whatever the spell you have is whatever you don't care about mana mana means nothing it's just a little bar that grows and, and, and shrinks and like i what happened? This is Magic the Gathering. What did you do? Yeah. Somehow you got rid of all the flavor. Like one of the other what? complaints was that everything is monetized. Like it's it's Ugh. very clearly a money grab. Which to be clear, Wizards is a company, and I get that. I don't fault them for that. But it's the degree to I mean, which every single thing appears to be behind a paywall, and and what very little you get for it being free to play uh, was another complaint that people had of just the degree at which it's monetized. Putting a class behind a paywall is a horrible idea. I mean, just a wretched, awful idea. And I get that this is a third party developer wizard, you know, licensed out the IP, but not licensed out any of the art. I don't know this was look. this was sold. This was sold to us, explained to us that the people making this game are all about magic, man. They love magic. They've been playing magic for years, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, really? I don't think the same people are talking about the same people at this point. Also, <laughs> like, what? I don't play this style of game. I was never going to play Magic Legends, but the screenshots, like, the game just doesn't look good. I also, just, yeah. is my big thing. And yeah, apparently it runs like Garbo. Like, I was whatever. here from the beginning because I was because I spent years playing World of Warcraft. You know, before I, I I started playing Magic Ice Age Fallen Empires, I took a break around Stronghold and you know finished high school and all of that. Kind of found myself in my twenties, and I came back around Innistrad. But I spent that ten years playing World of Warcraft. I was a serious raider. So you know, when they came out and said we're doing an MMO, that was me. Like I was the audience for that, and so um, I was really excited about this. I I was eager to get in the the alpha or the beta i signed up for the website and so for people like me this was crushing because we had our hearts set on a very specific experience um and just to see it be you know to see this bait and switch has just been like really devastating hopefully it gets better 
because it's still in beta and they have time to improve and they listen to this feedback, not ours, but like the Reddit feedback, the big names that actually played the game and, you know, the game. I mean, yeah, I mean, just, the, uh, I, I don't. It's not good. It's tough because, you know, I sort of see how long, it, how far along it is in development. I mean, you know, they've already developed the sort of tutorial, which is kind of miserable, but whatever. They've already, like, I had all the voice lines recorded, which are kind of meh, but like, again, whatever. Like, they're so kind of pot committed and now they're like, well, we have to monetize all this stuff because we spent so much time and money making this thing that kind of you know we, we call it a glade warden right that that got you in the magic mood right and you're like the old mm. sunk the old sunk cost fallacy eh? yeah that's what All it right. feels like great for sure so this last little bit here i wanted to bring up because it it just cracked me up so much uh, i'll bring it up here on screen so we guys so we can take a look at it yeah this this first what are of all, your thoughts this is, on this i think this is kind of neat and all for all intents and purposes, I think this is kind of neat. This is Rock Love Jewelry, rocklove.com, doing uh, Magic the Gathering themed jewelry pieces. This isn't that silly uh, iron, what is it, nickel plate or whatever it was. Uh, oh, the coin? Yeah, the the, the you know the Jace coin and the Liana coin, which was absolutely silly. Right. Somebody I lost heard a the bet. watches. Remember those watches? I heard yeah. the watches were incredible. Somebody I mean, on Twitter I, I know bought one are. and was like, this was way better than I expected. That's fantastic because this yeah. allows them to make a Mox Diamond. This is, you know, literally Mox Diamond showing up right here, which that's I think is cool. really cool. Um, and then you have Sensei's Divine Top, and you're like, oh, also that's pretty fine. Also like, pretty neat. cool. Then Iconic. we get to a man of all. It's a, it's a box. Cool. It's got the cube. <laughs> it looks like that thing you put your cat in when you take them to the vet. Like. Right, right. <laughs> but it's a, it's a box. Okay, cool. And then, like, what? Black this Rice. this is black vice and this yeah. is like it's that from black the vice masterpiece. Is like fifty shades of gray. Like that's something like Christian Gray would give you to like. Mercy this is or something. Yeah. <laughs> not not icon as iconic at least as they probably thought it was or something. Oh because the this vice is, isn't iconic. The no. doll that's in the vice is what's iconic. Yes, exactly. If they had done it of the doll, that's true. That would have been sweet because this is the master. This is based on the masterpiece version of Black Vice right. that yeah. no one owns basically, and the no. only ones like the I ones didn't that you remember is the art. Yeah, that came from Alpha. Would you not go from the Alpha art instead yeah. of this? That was that was the only weird thing. Overall, I think this is fantastic. There's I think a, these are cool. a, a mana wheel or whatever for your ring or your pendant. That's yeah. super cool because you know, this is sort of what they do is they make the custom jewelry. It's awesome to sort of have magical things that kind of come to life. I think this is all great. This is this is perfect in all the ways that silly Jay's coins were not perfect. Like it's it's a way you can express yourself and your love for magic and you know your significant other or whatever to make it feel more. The you know, mana wheels thematic. remind me of. Oh God, I can't believe I'm doing this. Um, the mana wheels remind me of when you go to Pride and people who've like just come out, they're totally suckers for like everything rainbow themed. So if you ever go to Pride for the first time and like if you just come out, you're buying rainbow everything. You're getting like yep. rainbow rings, rainbow necklaces, rainbow coasters. Once you've been out a while, you're just like, I don't need all that stuff. But for somebody who's just come out, they'll buy anything rainbow. And that's what this reminds me of. <laughs> There's Baby's nothing wrong with that. Right? Thing. <laughs> yeah. First third party magic product. Like, Thank it. you to that's the people in chat who are going to Pride. And if you're not going yeah. to Pride, you should fix that because it's a great time. I'm, I'm sure it's Pride. a hoot. Pride's fun. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. So this was, again, this this to me was like, oh, but they, they kind of did it right. I think that one is kind of hilarious. That just makes me kind of make fun of it a little bit. But at the I same time, it's still the great. choices are a little baffling. I think that Mox Diamond's a shoe in. Mox Diamond's a shoe in. That was a killer. I yeah. think that Top is fine. It's, it's okay. iconic enough. It's fine. The other two, it's like, why didn't we just do, go with other Moxin? Or right. Mox yeah. Opal. If they just literally did like the Moxin is like, and, you know, and Mox Diamond or whatever, or, or and Opal, like, you know, they could have done a whole Mox theme. There's a lot of jewelry they could have done. Like I was they excited for like an LED perhaps, of like some sure. way to do that. Like, yeah. Yeah, and they're like, but we need this this little box and we need to put it <laughs> yeah, on your chest vice. right here. Because when you think jewelry, you think black vice. <laughs> And that black vice of all the, th I, I can't, oh it's silly. God. It cracks me up, but good luck to him. I hope it sells well. Sure. All right. So let's turn the corner here to the finisher. Magic is tapping into the magic that is celebrity more recently. Just today, a new magic arena commercial drop featuring day nine with his roommates, Danny Trejo and Patton Oswalt. Jimmy Wong appeared on magic's weekly news update and big names like Joseph Gordon Levitt have hawked magic in recent memory. The road towards the mainstream is a rocky one, but tell me who would you like to see pedal magic to pump those numbers up, Aaron? 
Well, that's cool and all, but also that's a lot of straight cis dudes for a game trying to expand to new horizons. And it's not like there aren't amazing women and non-binary people that play Magic. So I'm hoping that Magic sponsors the next season of Top Chef, hosted by a notable woman who has tweeted about Magic, Padma Lakshmi. Because Magic, I love you, but as a Top Chef host, she can certainly identify this fan base needs a little bit more flavor. Just a little Big streamers are huge business, and Day9 proves that Wizards knows that. Twitch super streamer Ludwig's subathon has been going on for like two weeks, yeah. thanks to constant resubs and bit donations. Shroud and Valkyrie and more have hundreds of thousands of followers watching them just chatting. So I'm looking forward to MTG sponsoring Andy Dick, one of the world's most famous streamers. Wow. <laughs> he got... Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Look, gotta tap into wow. the zeitgeist. All right. Gotta tap in there. What's hot? What's new? What's happening? And nothing is hotter, newer, or happeninger than the Snyder Cut. So I'm excited for future Magic sets to experience that same style of bump. And personally, I'm looking most forward to the Oko Cut. All right. Mm. What's the Oko Cut? I've uh, thrown it Where we drink, cut right? Oko. Oh, mm. we're not supposed to. Okay. Is that what we're doing now? I don't know. <laughs> All right. That'd be cool. And we also put it in in four by three format. Right. right, as we chose. And that ends the live episode of Magic Mike's. Thanks for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Ruben. Thank you. See you next week for pre- uh, official preview day, everybody. Previews coming next week right here. A sweet card coming to you. We'll see you not then. Not an April Fool's joke. It's not. No, for real. And we're moving to our final slide. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsors, CardHoarder.com, and our newest sponsor, Alter Sleeves. Get yours at AlterSleeves.com slash Magic Mics. My co-hosts, Aaron Campbell and Ruben Bressler, you guys for watching and listening, and hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mics. Please follow, like, sweet, favorite, share, subscribe to everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us online on our Discord, Twitch.tv at Magic Mics, on Twitter at Magic Mics Cast, our Magic Mics subreddit, and like the Magic Mics page on Facebook. Or join us here next week, same time, same place, for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody.